Hey, welcome everybody. Today I'm bringing you 13 tips for your base and community in State of Decay 2. Um, this video is definitely for anybody who's new to State of Decay and just are overwhelmed with what exactly you have to do and just uh, give you a better understanding and more familiarity with exactly how to manage, uh, better manage your base and community. All right, tip number one, save your influence for your first two outposts instead of using them on trade-in. Um, oftentimes, a lot of people who are unfamiliar with this type of game, uh, they spend their, their influence um, not very efficiently, and as a result, it costs them a lot early on. Sometimes it leads to their survivors leaving their base or abandoning them or you know not having enough for when they actually needed to help uh, stabilize their base. Um, I recommend that the first two outposts you get is uh, one for medicine and one for food, because usually those are the two main things you you need when you first start a base uh, if after those two you want to get a third outpost I highly recommend getting like a power plant outpost because at least that will supply power to your base and give you a bit more um, it also gives you a morale bonus too so that's all a, a good option Tip number two, prioritize outpost that provides water and electricity, or one or both, as that will actually save you build spaces at your home base. And while most of the outpost gives you some benefit, the um, synergy of having electricity for all of your buildings and water at the same time, or a combination of both, it definitely helps make things much easier and much less uh, stressful morale-wise. So that should be one of your highest priority in terms of outposts. Um, hopefully, if you've already have an outpost established by for food and medicine by them but if not you know I would say recommend get one of those first just to get that supply coming in on a daily basis but once you get that minimum outpost out of the way your highest priority outpost should be either electricity or water Tip number three, pay attention to what your community wants in an outpost. Building structures they're interested in grants your community bonuses. So for example, if your community is starving, then it might be best to get a food outpost. If they need electricity, it might be best to get that. If they need, you know, medicine, uh, you know, that's best. If they need ammo to defend themselves, that might be best. So it's very important that you're aware of what your community needs to best, um, support them and help keep the morale high if all, all if all needs are met for your community then of course your highest priority should be electricity and water because that pr gives you extra building space so you don't have to worry about that and gives you a bonus of have, adding power to all your facilities at home so that should be uh, your also, another way to kind of see a, a quick overview of what your community needs is by pressing the down button on your controller or I don't know what it is on PC, but in essence, that gives you a quick summary of what you need. And you can see right there to the top left, that gives you a summary of what your community looks like, what it needs. Red, of course, shows that I need ammo right now, so I have a couple options. I could either get an ammo rucksack or I could get an ammo outpost. Uh, I don't really need, um, think it's necessary to get an outpost for ammo in this case, so I'm just going to get a rucksack, but I want to at least show you that quick overview to the top left where it gives you a quick um, idea of what your base need in terms of uh, supply wise and that could help you determine what outposts you need to uh, claim to help uh, maintain and uh, maintain the morale of your uh, company so and number four if you're trying to increase a person's standing but don't want to take them out, um, have them turn in supplies. Uh, they'll gain a little influence with each bag they turn in, even if they don't didn't find it. So this is a good way to boost a character that you're you're not too keen on taking out of your base. For example, your doctor or medical. Um, medical person that provides medical support to your team you don't want to take that person out because that person is going to be instrumental to maintaining your base um, having a physician on hand is is incredibly important so you really ever want to take your physician out to do um, supply runs or to do anything dangerous where they could get killed you know so as a result if you want to boost them so they can at least become hero status and provide better bonuses then have them turn in your supplies um, and when you bring it back to base and that way it improves their financial finding so that's a quick tip to kind of help boost your base overall tip number five when your vehicle is parked at base in a parking spot you can hit the right trigger button which will automatically transport your um, whatever you have in the trunk whether it's a rucksack or an item immediately into your base this saves you so much time instead of you individually carrying these items back to uh, your base or dropping them off in your base and so especially if you have a, a trunk full of rucksacks this is a lifesaver because try, trying to carry six rucksack individually back to base is just so monotonous so may, be sure to use this to be with transporting and, and depositing uh, rucksacks and other items into your base. 
Tip number six, if your morale is low, visit the base tab in menu and view the morale tab to get a breakdown of your score. Uh, this is very important if you're trying to figure out what exactly is causing morale to be um, negative, or positive, or otherwise. Um, so it's a good way to kind of become more familiar with what your um, teammates or your members of community are doing, how they interact, and it, it gives you a full detail of everything, like in terms of who is getting to the fight with what, how their bonuses are affecting the community, etc. So it's a very good tab to get much more in depth and, and kind of peel on peel back the layer and look at the RPG factors, which it kind of reminds me a little bit of Sims in this aspect. So be sure to be familiar with this, particularly if you really want to be good at managing your community and manage your, your actual survivors. Number seven. Be sure to use the base menu to quickly assign facility actions like having your community members clear trash or repair a facility, uh, do upgrades or you know anything of that nature. So that's important to be efficient, particularly if you were under the impression that you had to manually go there and do all this yourself. So this is another lifesaver uh, tip for managing your base and making sure stuff gets done. And uh, it usually takes about a minute or two or a little bit longer depending on the type of uh, um, task it is you need them to do. But overall, this is what you want to have them doing while they're at base versus just sitting there idly by and not being able to do thing however keep in mind that some of these tasks do require supplies so if you're low on a specific supply it might be best to wait until you have surplus in that supply before you have a new specific task that would drain that supply otherwise so keep that in mind for the different type of tasks that are available to you and of course with so many different facilities be sure to look at what task um, is needed versus what task you should be doing and that's you know needs versus wants so be very um, meticulous in terms of analyzing that Tip number eight, um, performing facility actions increases your base threat level. Um, you can view your threat level in the base tab off the menu. This is important, particularly if you know that you are not very well prepared to defend any type of siege. Um, you might not want to do any facility requests at the moment until you get stocked up and have enough to defend. Um, the sieges can get pretty brutal later on, especially if you're at a higher threat level and you don't have enough supplies. Uh, once face close to 30 zombies attacking my base so that's something that's very important and, and and need to be aware of that as you upgrade your facility and the threat level is at the bottom left of your base mode view so right there in the bottom left side you see the little yellow bar and that represents your threat level of course green means it's really good yellow means it's caution and red means uh, eminent danger so keep that in mind number nine early in the game you have very limited storage so it's best to use your vehicles parked at the base to safely store extra supplies so they don't decay um, when you overstock your supplies and you don't because your storage is low your supplies will deteriorate over time so sometimes it's, it's good to either do it in a rucksack pull it out and display in a rucksack and put it in your vehicle or um, don't deposit it to begin with in your storage so that way it doesn't decay so keep an eye on your storage limit um, you can check your storage limit by looking at your storage supply in your base mode uh, by clicking on that facility and while you're at it don't forget to upgrade your facilities um, doing so will improve their capabilities keep increase their storage limit if for your certain um, certain facilities like your storage um storage facility because that's the only other way besides building a second storage facility which isn't really the most efficient to have two storage facility because you can use that slot for something that you might need um, more um more importantly than the storage so you know be sure to check which um supplies or which um which supplies is needed to upgrade your facility and then which upgrades are are you capable of doing capable of doing because sometimes you need specific skills to upgrade certain things and that's very important because um your command center is pretty easy to upgrade but so many others need either like a specific skill like craftsmanship or mechanic or something else so be sure to look at all the details and see where it is to upgrade and usually you can tell the upgrade by the double up arrow on your facility Number 11, if you miss a survivor's mission, they'll be disappointed, but they'll sometimes bring that mission back up again. So be sure to catch it, if not the first, but the second time. However, not all missions um, they do bring back up. So that's important. Um, and try to prioritize to see which missions you actually want to complete versus not, because you do get a lot of requests and figure out what works best for you, what works best for your character or your actual individual need for your base. Then, you know, that usually is the best choice um, to go with because you can't exactly do every single mission all at once you have to choose pick choose and refuse so keep that in mind you can also see what missions are available in um, your community tab or on the map itself when you open it um, very important to kind of prioritize if once you have a leader promoted that becomes even critical to make sure you do her legacy missions 
Tip number 12, be sure to help out enclaves whenever you can and have the time to. Um, they often sometimes give you benefits like supplies as well as additional uh, influence on top of what you already normally get. So it's also a good way to kind of win over um, enclaves to, to the point where you might eventually be able to recruit them uh, for them to become a part of your community. Nada. Take it easy. All right, tip number 13, you can withdraw uh, rucksacks and other supplies from your base storage. Use this to complete goals that require you to gather supplies if you're having a hard time finding them. So this is actually pretty uh, unique in that you're able to actually pack that up and package it for either a mission that you need to complete or if you want to give it to one of your friends in co-op online. So it's a very neat trick and it shows, uh, it really shows the ability to trade and, and just have more utility in the game itself outside of just killing zombies and return supplies to base. So um, in order to do that, though, you do need to go to your storage supply and actually choose uh, pack a rucksack and then you can choose which um, material you want to pack and that's for the main resources of course for for actual rucksacks and then you could also you know pick up individual supplies outside of your rucksacks whether you want to pick up ammo or specific guns things like that and you could actually um, pack that up too if you need so but for the most part this is really used for packing rucksacks and filling it up for when you need to give it to a um, either somebody for a mission, you know, like an um, enclave or one of the others, um, one of your allies, or if you want to give it to a co-op person, um, one of your friends online. And that complete 13 basic tips for managing your base and community. Thank you guys for watching. If you'd like to see more videos like this, don't forget to like uh, or comment or subscribe and let me know what tip helped you the most and what you actually learned from this video. Uh, until then, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye.